everybody. Welcome back to Environmental Science Analysis with Dr. Lisa. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make some maps using R. Um, the cool thing about R, you know, is that it's open source. And so people have started to develop all kinds of, of packages for it. I don't think R ever was really originally intended to be used to draw maps, but guess what? You can draw maps with R now. Uh, I, I've shown you how to draw some simple maps using Google Earth. And it turns out that using R is, is basically using Google Earth. Um, uh, and so what you really want to do, unfortunately, Google has decided that you need to have a key uh, to use Google Earth with R. And so you have to go get yourself a key. There's a link to, on, on our course website, there's a link to the video of how to do this, how to get your key. Uh, you can get it as a free trial, or you can use, if you're in my class, you can use my key. Um, so I'm not going to show you my key because I don't want you to steal it. Uh, anybody on the internet could steal it, don't want that. Uh, but once you have done that, once you have Google has given you a, a, a key, then you can log into Google and basically use Google with R to make plots. So I'm going to use some of these plots. I think that the big one is this GG map. I'm going to use that. Uh, ggplot2 is a more common to do all kinds of data visualization, but ggmap is specifically for maps. And then I'm going to end up also using this thing called leaflet, so that's good to have in there too. So the first thing I'm going to do is read in my data. So this is data on uh, perfluoral compounds measured in fish in the Great Lakes. So we have a latitude and longitude for where the fish were caught, uh, different species of fish, the state in which they were caught, which of the five Great Lakes they were caught in, and then F1 through F5 are uh, concentrations of chemicals. And then we have a sum of, I'm going to mostly focus on the sum of all the chemicals that were measured in these fish. So these are in units of parts per million. Okay, so these are like actual measurements, and obviously they, they are a continuous range, uh, whereas species would be like categories of species, states are categories as well. So I've read in my, my uh, data. I'm just going to practice a little geocoding here to make sure that everything's working correctly. Yep, and I've got, so I'm going to look for Berlin. I'm going to do geocoding with Berlin. I got this from a video on YouTube. Thank you for that. Um, and it's just, I'm just making sure that my software, my, my um, license key for, for Google Earth is showing up here. So I'm getting a latitude and longitude for the city of Berlin. Uh, and if I wanted to, I could map that. Character location is not true. Oh, well that's that's the wrong thing anyway. So let's ignore that. Okay, so first thing I want to do is I'm going to plot my fish data, and I'm going to use a command called qmplot, a function called qmplot. In my data file, the longitude is called long, and the latitude is called lat. So the first two arguments should be your longitude and your latitude, and where to find them. And in my fish data, they are here under long and lat. Note, long comes first, and then latitude. The data is from this thing called fish up here. Um, and then I can say what kind of map I want. This is just one of the defaults you can use. Uh, and then the color of the points I'm going to set to be red here. And voila, almost like I planned it, here is a map of fish all over the Great Lakes. So these are fish that were captured. This is actually a study done by the EPA. Uh, fish were caught all along the shoreline of the Great Lakes. And so this is just showing the, you the latitude and longitude of every fish sample that was caught. But maybe I want to do something more interesting with that. Maybe I want to uh, color these dots by species, right? So species is one of the headers here. So I can choose it as my field to select the color. So control enter. And so rendering maps is a little slow, takes some time. But there it is, OK? And if we want, we can export this. Maybe we'll save it as an image file. Uh, I'll call this uh, fish by species. And it'll load up here. And I can maybe make it bigger. Maybe I'll make this bigger so you can see it better. But you know, here's all the, the different fish samples, and the different colors correspond to the different types of different species of fish. Cool beans, right? OK, um, so that was uh, colored by species. Now, maybe I want to 
color these data points by how high the concentrations of the different chemicals were. So instead of color equals species, I could say color equals sum of measured, which again is a field here, over here. Oh, where is it? Sum measured. That's one of my fields. I could choose any of these fields, but I'm going to choose sum measured. So if I plot this, now you can see uh, lower concentrations are in darker colors, higher concentrations are in lighter colors. So again, let's give you a better view of this. Fish by concentration. And here's a, here's a better version. Zooming in, you can see again. It's a little bit, to me, this is a little bit counterintuitive because I would expect darker colors to be higher concentrations, but the way that this is done by default is that darker colors are lower concentrations. Um, so there's, there's different ways that we could draw these points and different things that we could do to them, but this is one of the defaults that's included in the, in the GG map pa package. Okay, so that was coloring everything by the, the concentration. We could, again, and we could do any concentration, anything that's in our data field we could do. Now, let's say I don't love this, this dark blue to light blue thing, uh, and instead I want to maybe um, take this sum of measured and divide it up into 10 uh, tranches, 10 batches from low concentration to high concentration. I could use this cut feature, cut sum of measured into 10 batches, uh, and Again, takes a minute to render, but here's your, make it a little bit bigger, here's your plot, and now, you know, high concentrations are in this orange color and low concentrations are in the pink. Again, I'm not in love with this because it's hard for me visually to tell the difference between the pink and the, the highest concentration here and the lowest concentration look kind of similar to me. Um, but you can mess around with all of these points, all of these colors. Um, you can mess around with the, the cutoffs for where the different concentrations start and end. Um, you can mess around with all that stuff. Let's go back over here. So, so I made these 10 gradations and the colors of the measured concentration. There, we could also, uh, instead of changing the color, we might change the size. So let's do the size in 10 gradations. And now the size of the dot corresponds to the concentration here. Bigger dots have bigger concentrations. And we could actually do it both ways so that both the color and the size are corresponding to the concentration and the points. Voila, bada bing, bada boom. Um, and what we could do too is we could have different things mean, different uh, parameters mean different things. So the size here could be related to the sum of the measured concentrations. So the size could be indicating high concentration versus low concentration, but the color could be indicating the species of fish. So there we go. Uh, and there's all kinds of other cool, cool stuff uh, we could do here. You know, we can mess around with this plot all day long. Again, you can export it here, save it as an image, um, and put it into a, a uh, report that you're writing, you know, paste it into a report that you're writing in Word, or you could use R Markdown and have the plot just be included in your R output. You know, there's a lots of different options here. Uh, you can mess around with this, adding titles and legends and put a north arrow on here. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. But that's how you get started, and it's, 